This video is gonna be kind of a follow up to my random duplication video. I received some comment that asked me how can we create the pattern that we duplicate. And after this tutorial, we should get something like this. With this easy setup where you can duplicate the pattern that you created to the circles or maybe even to the curves. Or even, let's say, to the points to the bounding box. Let's start with initial setup. So what I'm going to do is put down a circle and this is going to be a circle that we are going to duplicate these points. It's going to be the point that we are going to duplicate around our objects. Now let's create some maybe a simple box and make sure that the box is not bigger than a circle that we want to copy to. Let's make this kind of shape. Let's put down a sphere. Let's try to make it around the same size. And then also let's create the two. Like that. So we have three shapes. Let's merge them together. Put down transform. So these are the points that we want to copy to. Circle, and now let's put down a copy to points. So in the first one, target points to copy to is this. The first one is that. So like that. That's nice. You can just transform it together. But right now they obviously copy all of them. That's what we can do. If you have only one connected geometry for this, you can just put down a connectivity node after the merge. What it's going to do is create the connectivity attribute. So go in here, then go to the polygonal selection primitives. Press on this, you can see the, there's a class the class attribute now. You can see that every connected geometry in our merge node has its own unique number and we can reference it to the copy to the points. So so let's go to the copy to the points and there's a source group. And all you have to do is add class equals let's save it zero. So now we have separated our add class only to copy our zero which is our boxes. And the way we can create our pattern is by using a group by range node so let's say this is our object it's going to copy to it doesn't have to be circle but for now let's turn on the point number let's start with zero here so in group by range put down to the points and you in the range filter you can select let's say i want to two points of every two points let's going to select the section 3 of 2, we only select all of them. So if I point to the, let's say 4, we start with the 0. So I want to select 2, I select 2, and of 4. So total of 4, I select 2. So and then pattern repeats again 4, 2 select. So if you select 5, you see that you select 2, and then 3 are are not selected so that's how we can create our pattern let's say we want to select two of let's say our pattern is going to be maybe six big we need to select two of every six points like that so this is going to be our pattern let's put down a pattern a this is our pattern one then what you can do you duplicate, put down, put this down, and here what you can do is just put down an asterisk before pattern A, put down asterisk, uh, asterisk, and before the pattern A word, you can just shift and six. I'm not really sure how it's called. This kind of like triangle, and then asterisk at the end. Then press. Enter and actually it's not a group but it's actually not a group name but it's a group. 
is going to be our pattern B, like that. With this group syntax, what we have done is said that we want to only work on points that are not in a group A, so all the points except for the group A points. So for us to create this pattern, let's turn off this group visualizer. Let's say you want to select two of every whatever. You can see we have a problem because we can change this and it's going to actually impact our shape. What you want to do is actually work only on a free point that we have in here. So let's say we have in our pattern there are six, so to the five, and we only work want to work in this only on four points of these. So that's our range for our secondary group. For us to make it procedural, what we have to do is just reference these two channels in our group B. So what I'm going to do is take this and select copy parameter, go back to our group two, delete this and paste and then just paste relative reference like that. So and then if you click on this and Alt Q, see it's six. But what you want to do is also take two out of it. So we just have to subtract two out of this channel. And what I'm going to do is just duplicate this, minus, and copy it again. And all we have to do is just change the just change the reference to the channel. So so that channel is so this channel in here is named select amount one this one is something other so that's select amount one and that's going to be select amount that's select total so you just have to change select amount and it's going to show us even so like that and now you can see it's four and if we change this you have to change this with this too if you change this they are procedurally changing also. So let's make it 2 and 6. And now we can do whatever, how many we want in our second pattern. So let's say we want 3. We want 3 in our second pattern, so we have 1, 2, and that's pattern A. That's pattern A and this is pattern B. And let's create another one. For the last group, what I want to do is select all the points that are not in a and B, what I'm going to do is put down a just a simple group node and in a base group, what I'm going to do is just copy this and copy this again, make it to the B like that, make it to the points like that. So this is going to just select everything that's not inside A and B groups. Of course, we can also go again. We can do the same thing with the B. We want another shape in it. So, but for now, three shapes are going to be good enough for me. So now we have our groups. Now let's just copy them. What I'm going to do is duplicate these copy to points, and every one of these copy to points, I'm going to target points from. Also, let's rename the pattern, pattern C, in our new group. It's going to be our pattern C. And now that we have set up our groups, all we have to do is go to these copy to points. And what we have to do is just choose the target points. So we have our groups in here, group A group B and group C like that and then just take these all and from one of these points hold alt then make them together like that one issue that we made find is that these patterns do not exactly match at the end because in circle we can change it to something like maybe 9 and 10 that this doesn't match so what we can do is actually go in here and edit parameter interface and we want to put down an integer value in here and call it uh, maybe multiplier 
I don't even know how it's correctly written, but I'm just gonna copy it, apply and accept. So we have now this spare channel inside our circle node. What we can do is we know that our pattern is six six points big, so we can just copy this parameter, copy inside divisions, uh, paste relative reference like that. So now we have six, and all we can do is just we can just du duplicate it by this channel, which is called multiplier. Multiplier. So ch, and since it's inside our own node, we don't have to point out the other node, so we just can just point at the label of it, which is multiplier, which I just copied. Actually, I didn't copy it. I really gonna just copy it from here. Ch like that. You can see now we are we are basically multiplying this amount of what how big is our group, which is six, with the label of here. So twelve, basically six, twelve, eighteen, thirty. So. We always get the right number of sites for, for our pattern. So we go in here. You can see that our pattern ends with square with this with this box. And if you change the division of it, you can see it's always going to change with the box at the end, like that. So that's one trick you can do. But for us, this pad for us basically this pattern is set up, so we can all, always do something. We can copy to the curves. Or also one thing, we can also change the rotation of these objects. So what we have done in this transform node, you can see right now it goes right all together at the same direction. But actually what you can do before copying them to the points, after the group of range, after the circle actually, let's put down the sort node. Or not the sort uh, polyframe. Put down a polyframe and make it to the two edges. And also, this is my default on it. The default is going to be a little bit different. So make sure it's exactly like mine to the point. And tangent name is the normal. So it's going to look weird now. But with this, what we have done is actually pointed our objects with the normal attribute. Which is going to help us to transform it. So, if you go to transform of these objects, you can see we can actually we can actually rotate these like that. And for us to maybe make it a little different, we can just make it to the top. So it's like on y direction. Go back to the transform. See now they're actually going to face face together to the, that point. So that's a cool effect you can create. So the actually the rotation of this actually also matters. So for me the actually the y direction works. So in y direction you can see that they're actually pointing all at the same direction to the center of it. So that's kind of cool thing you can do. So, so that is if you want the pattern. So what we can do is also create a curve. Let's create a curve. Just a simple curve. And then we can do is just resample it. First we have to create the curve as a norm, then resample it. Which see we are getting equal amount of equal equal drag equal spaces between the points there are some useful you create only the points which is fine which doesn't really matter so what we can do is just pipe it into here we have copied our we have copied our pattern to the points like that. Also, you can 
scale it. You can move them around like that. And one cool, what cool thing you can do with this pattern is actually create the. Let's create the box. Let's duplicate it. Maybe like that. Now let's merge them together. Let's create the bounding box for this object. So in labs, there's the multi bounding box option. So what you're going to do is create a bounding box from these, from any of the objects that are in here. So if I move any of these boxes, you can see that our bounding box is actually expanding like that. And from this bounding box, you can create actually the point inside it. So put down the point. And there's an option. Points from volume, like that. And with this, with this setting, make sure you have the same settings. You can actually create the points inside the bounding box object, like that. See, with this point separation, you can make it insanely dense or not so. And then all you have to do is just pipe it inside the our pattern. You can see that we have basically copy them to the points to the we copy the objects to the points register some you can actually make it like that but basically the same pattern only copy to the points if you change the boxes see we can expand it like that one last thing I wanted to show is you can actually randomize the pattern with the sort node just put down the sort after the you have made points after point volume and there's actual point sort you can just make it randomized let's turn off the point number and you watch at our pattern go to the sort you can randomize the seed of it so basically the same amount of points same amount of every every shape there will be but it's going to be just in other places because we are shuffling around the point numbers so I think that's it for this tutorial I hope you found anything useful in it and I see you later probably with more VEX lessons that's it take care